Hey everybody, uh, so today we are going to kind of make up for the fact that we missed one of our studio sessions and talk through some ways that you can use Invoke to do kind of like style transfer type stuff. I think this is one of the questions that we sometimes get. Mainstream AI tools that offer simple style transfer workflows. I think almost everybody knows that under the hood, those are just you know, workflows that have been built using Stable Diffusion and ControlNet and IP Adapter to kind of get that effect. So the question often comes up, how do I replicate that in Invoke? And so we'll talk through today, maybe some of the examples of how you can play around with the settings using control layers and how you can use different models to kind of push it in different directions. So the first thing I've got is I've got this kind of like 3D dragon on a teacup type thing. And I'm just going to walk through a couple of ways that we can kind of transform this. So right now I've got the Reality Fuse XL model. It generates kind of photorealistic outputs. Um, and so I'm going to take each of these and kind of turn them a little bit more into photorealistic or more textured variants of themselves. We'll kind of see how this same workflow applied to each of these, what effects it has, where it works well, where maybe it falls short, and ways that you can come address those shortcomings so that you can get the results you're looking for. A lot of this comes down to, do you have a model that generates the type of output that you're wanting to go towards from a style perspective? So if you're using a photorealistic model and trying to get you know, watercolor paintings or digital art, it's gonna be a lot less uh, powerful and probably more disappointing than if you use a model that's purpose built for the job. And that's why it's always important to find a really good model for the use case that you have. But in this case, we're gonna go to our control layers. I'm gonna add three to start, uh, initial image, IP adapter, and control adapter. So three global uh, controls. I'm gonna use one of the newer uh, Canny SDXL control nuts that has come out recently. Um, maybe we can include a link to those in um, the descriptions, but this really, really powerful new set of SDXL control nuts that came out from a community uh, member and playing around with them really strong. So I like to use those. For our IP adapter, I'll just kind of use our standby SDXL BITH model, and I'm gonna drag our dragon into each of these. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by bringing the weight down on this candy control to about 0.5. It's a good starting point and maybe about 80% uh, end step. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna have a light structural control throughout the entire generation, except the very end where it'll open it up a little bit to kind of like color in the details, right? From a denoising strength perspective, I'm gonna bring that up to about 0.8 or 0.85. Um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna nudge that, that initial noise to the kind of color spectrum that we have here. Um, it's gonna give some light structural control, but most of that structural control is coming from the candy control. This is just a good way to kind of have it guided towards the colors that we want. It's just to kind of push it that way early on. And then we'll use our IP adapter here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to about 0.45 to start. I'm leaving that at the full method even though that will include some of the stylistic elements, but the fact that we're bringing that weight down is gonna help here. I may also go ahead and bring down the in step to about 50%. So we'll start with this initial configuration just to see what we can get. And I'm going to just use the prompt of photo. Um, I don't want to instruct it too much. I could, if I wanted to, you know, obviously put that in the prompt, but I'm relying mostly on the structure and the IP adapter to give us the, the contents of this image, what is in the image. And I really just wanna focus our prompt on being a photo. I might even upload it three times. Uh, so we'll go ahead and give that a generation, see what we get. All right, so what I'm gonna do uh, with our new generation is I'm gonna right click our old generation and I'm gonna use the new select for compare option. That way we can kind of see what this transformation did. Um, and so comparing this, we can see that it added a lot more depth and details to this because it's now, you know, kind of injecting a lot of photorealistic elements to it. You can see that it kept a lot of our structure the exact same. Uh, so we didn't lose much there. We lost a little bit of the, the color of our original here. Um, so we've got yellow spikes rather than red, but largely I think we just added a lot of really nice detail and made this feel a little bit more 
unreal real you know what i mean um it looks more like a plastic figurine now than correct. a cgi created thing right and then we, we could even cycle this back through and do this again right so if we wanted to we like this uh this version of it um we can cycle that back through now obviously if we wanted to loosen up the controls we could and that would give it even more flexibility in creating the new image we compare this with our original to see what that looks like so you know we've got this much more detailed uh breveled uh output the table has even become more of a photo right it's like on a table it looks like it's got a lot of depth and texture um, and so we're kind of seeing that uh, transformation happen there which is really really cool the structure again is being controlled by a combination of the canny very loosely constraining right but the initial image gives it a lot of kind of structural control as well because it's kind of nudging where there's foreground and background using that initial image but there's also some of the composition coming in from the ip adapter so all of these things together are kind of giving it a loose approximation that ultimately gives us something that uh, fits a lot of what we were looking for one thing that's really cool about this is a lot of consumer tools will be a simple, you upload an image, maybe there's a single slider and then it gives you an output. And what we're seeing here is, you know, 16 different parameters that give you an immense amount of control in the process. So if you are someone who is looking at this and there's pieces of this that you really want to tweak and fine tune, um, maybe you, you don't want it to follow the scale structure as much um, that you want to give it more creativity. You can really go in there and and hone specific parts of the image um, or, or specific pieces of that transformation, which is pretty cool. And this all works with our regional controls as well. We are giving it enough creativity here that it can kind of reimagine these pieces. We've got green eyes and gold golden shiny leaves. We're kind of injecting that into the transformation so that as it goes through, it's gonna kind of nudge those in that direction. Now we're still bound by kind of our original structure of the image. We're still controlling that, but now our transformation uh, we, we just got this element of fine tuned control that we can kind of inject into this. So we've got our green dragon eyes, we've got our golden leaves that are kind of coming up here. Uh, and if we go back again and compare this to the original, we've just done a really good job of like transforming this and getting a new look and feel to what we wanted. So that's kind of number one. I haven't tested this one out yet, so we'll just see what we get. We may need to put in some new terms, but We'll just see what we what we get with just a raw give me a photo of this if we look at our kind of control image we should get a pretty high fidelity uh, representation of all the elements uh, but it'll be curious to see how it looks it doesn't really look super great this is more of like an illustrative i mean i almost prefer this original one to the what came out because this is a little bit of like depth missing here uh, so what i want to do is i want to change this to uh, and I think the prompt is hindering us here. So I'll do a landscape, nature, photography. This may be a case where we want to decrease the strength of our canny a little bit and maybe decrease the strength of our IP adapter a little bit as well. What I may also do is switch. I think reality fuse might be better at people. I'll switch this to our custom model and see if that combination of things gives us a little bit more of what we're looking for. Again, I think this is a workflow that is very sensitive to the model itself because you're relying on it, understanding exactly the type of thing that you're trying to generate in the right style. And so I think that this, um, these updates may help us get a little bit closer to what we're looking for. And so now we've got a little bit more, uh, I would say more texture, but it still feels a little bit illustrated in my mind. Um, so I'm going to put a negative prompt in for illustration. This is, this is pretty good. One of the things that we've found, especially with like artists who are passing in a sketch, they've got a little bit more of kind of like a high complexity sketch. Um, this, this can kind of help anchor things in the image so that it knows what it's looking at when it's generating. Uh, and it gives you just a lot more fidelity to your original input. So let's compare that to our original. Yeah. So I think, you know, well, we've got pretty decent transformation here that's got these elements getting transformed. Um, there's definitely a little bit of touch-ups that I would do. It's got a little bit of like 
work bits in there that make it look a little illustrated. Uh, but overall, I think it's a decent transformation just to kind of showcase that, that you can do it. Might be improved if we had a model that was a little bit more focused on this type of landscape work. We're just kind of using like a LoRa model for nature photography or something like that. Right. right. And I think this goes back to, again, when you train a LoRa or a custom model, you're able to define the language that you can use to do these types of transformations. And so that gives you just a lot more uh, control over the type of content it's expecting when you use that. So we'll go to our last one here, which is this kind of like very soft oil painting looking. It's kind of a blurry blob of a, of a guy. Um, and we're going to try to change that to more of a photorealistic uh, one. I'll go back to that reality fuse model. Uh, and we'll drag this guy in. Can you remind folks what low threshold and high threshold are? Yeah, so when you're using a control adapter, um, each control model like Canny is going to have a processor that accompanies it. And that takes an input image and processes it to find the types of information that the model is going to work with. So Canny is looking for edges inside of the image. And what low threshold and high threshold do is set kind of the parameters for how sensitive that edge detection should be. The low threshold is, and the high threshold both operate on a spectrum of lower threshold means more is going to be included. So a lower threshold, if I drop this down all the way, it will have a very low bar for edges. It's just going to pick up more. So we can see it's picking up some of like the, the beard hair here. Um, we can take the high threshold down as well. And then we just get all of the lines everywhere, right? If we bring that up, we're kind of really just saying, this is what we care about. We care about the neckline. We care about these lines in the arms, but you're going to have a lot more freedom within the lines. If you overly constrain the AI, it can kind of just, its brain can break trying to figure out how to make all the lines work. So yeah, now we've got our uh, guy in glasses. He's got his beard, he's got his shirt. And again, what this, what the benefit of this is, is you're structurally keeping things the same, but you're giving it a lot of flexibility to transform uh, the contents stylistically. And that's kind of what you want is you want to keep structure the same, but you want to allow it to really kind of reimagine and pull out a lot of those details. And this works. I mean, this, you know, obviously we're going from like things that aren't photos to photos, but if you have a model that's trained on your style or artwork, if you have a model that's trained on 3D, for example, you can push a lot of this stuff in that direction as well. Um, so you could have like, you know, tunify type workflows where we take this person and loosen up the constraints a little bit and tunify them. Maybe we should try to do that. Um, I haven't practiced that one, so it might, might go off the rails, but that's what's always fun about the studio sessions. We'll do one last thing. We'll try to tunify our, uh, photorealistic gentleman here. So we're going to take him. We're going to drop him as our controls, and then we are going to switch to 3D vibe, and we'll do 3D vibe style, uh, animated cartoon. Let's just see what we get when we try that out. We might have to loosen our uh, canny controls a little bit, but I can walk through the differences of the initial generation and then kind of where we end up. And so you can kind of follow along with how I'm experimenting, how I'm changing those settings and why. So we ended up with something that looks a little bit more cartoony. It's almost too controlled because you don't want the, you almost want the characteristics to be a caricature, right? You want those to loosen up, but you know, not so much that it looks like a different person, that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease this canny strength a little bit more and mostly bring down the end step. So we're just kind of giving it more freedom for more of that tail end. And so it's going to have a little bit more time to, to kind of like loosen the details up a little bit. And this actually turned out pretty well. It's a pretty good kind of like animated version of our, of our, of our guy here. But let's try with prompt as our control method and just see what happens. Um, so I'm, cu I'm curious. Okay. I think it probably changes which a bit more, but that's pretty common in animated cartoon workflows. I feel like there are actually dimensional changes so to faces, faces to make them seem more cartoonish. Yeah. The, the structural changes that come in from that, I think are, uh, 
be expected. I think this is probably more animated, but I like this one more, I think, as far as like personal preference. Mm -hmm. So again, I think this this works in whatever direction you want to go. The important piece is that you have a model and you can kind of nudge it in the right direction. So yeah, I think that will cover us for today. Hopefully that kind of style transfer session is interesting to people. We will share all the links to the models that Kent used in the description. Our Discord is always open. People are posting in their different workflows that they're testing out. That's where we get a lot of ideas of what to show. So we'll, we'll also have a link to join that um, in the description. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.